Welcome to The Road Show today. I'm your host, Kathy Mink, and I am so excited today to have a very special guest that you may have seen on television or read her books or been at one of her ministry events, and her name is Danette Crawford of Joy Ministries Evangelistic Association. Welcome to the broadcast, Danette. Thank you so much. It's my honor to be with you today. Well, I wanted to talk to you about one of your new books called Don't Quit in the Pit. (laughs) (laughs) That says it all. (laughs) It does. It says it all. It's a great title. Um, Now, you tell us a little bit about uh, where you are, uh, what part of the country you're in. Yes, yeah, so I am based out of Virginia Beach, Virginia, and we've been here, this is 31 years, we're in our 31st year of having the ministry based out of here. Wonderful. That is near, not too far from Regent University, which I see in your bio that you got a master's in counseling from Regent University. Yes, that's how God got me here to the Virginia Beach area. I came after undergrad at Lee University, and then I came up here to get my master's, and I haven't left yet. I graduated (laughs) two years later, and God said, I want you to base your ministry out of here, and we've been going strong ever since. That is wonderful. Now, I want you to tell us a little bit about your television outreach as well. You have a television program called Joy in the Morning. Now, how would the listeners tune that in? Okay, well, my program is called Hope for Today with Danette Crawford, and we're on 11 different networks. You can go to my website at DanetteCrawford.com to get the complete listing. But we're on uh, many different Christian networks, but we're also on ABC CBS, and the CW Network. So it's just really a privilege to be able to be reaching people on the secular networks. That is where we need to be reaching people. So that is so exciting. Now, I saw on your website that there's some excitement going on about a man that we know that is a great and well-known actor, Clifton Davis, working with you in television and being your executive producer. Tell us about that. Well, Clifton and his uh, wonderful wife, Monica, have been friends of mine for over 10 years, and Clifton has really served as a mentor to me for television, and he is my executive producer for our new show, which is called Joy with Danette Crawford, and this is it's a Christian talk show format. Our building, and we are in the final stages of our of building our new, brand new television studio here in Virginia Beach. We started in January, and then the pandemic hit in March, but we have continued to build like Nehemiah, and our Good. studio should be complete in about two weeks. So we're that excited is, about that. Oh, that's wonderful. And nothing could stop it. The Lord brought it on right through the pandemic. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, now, is he going to be on the program with you, or is he just helping produce it? So Clifton Davis is my executive producer, and he will also be co-hosting with me from time to time. I'll have various uh, different co-hosts, and Clifton will be one of my guest co-hosts. So that's exciting. Wonderful. Well, for the listeners, um, if you're trying to place who Clifton Davis is, uh, we remember him from one of his famous TV shows, Amen. Yeah. And then recently, you know, he has been uh, an advisor to the president on Madam Secretary. (laughs) Yes, exactly. He was on Madam Secretary. Also, he played in Aladdin on Broadway for a number of years, uh, just a couple years ago. He was on that for several years in New York. And, of course, he's on TBN, so he's so well-rounded. And the um, the program also, That's My Mama, he was on mm-hmm. and for, for a number of years. But, yes, we all know him from Amen. Yes, yes, we do. Well, we're very thrilled that he is such a dedicated Christian and a wonderful witness for the Lord Jesus Christ, and I'm glad to hear that he is helping you. Now, Amen. I want you to tell us... Uh, 
some of your story in a few minutes, but in the front of your book, Don't Quit in the Pit, which is available wherever books are sold, including your website, joyministriesonline.org. Is that correct? joyministriesonline.org. Yes, or you can also get to my website. A shorter way is joyministries.tv. Instead of .com, joyministries.tv. Yes. I'll take you right to the website. Okay, that's even quicker. And in the book, Don't Quit in the Pit, you begin by talking about a woman who you ministered to named D. And I felt, Danette, when I read that, that it just encapsulated a mini view of what you are doing for women, men as well, but of your outreach and the effect of your ministry. So tell us about D. What is so amazing is what Satan means for evil, God will use for good. Um, let me tell you how I met D. Uh, we had our the beginning of our television program. I had ladies calling in, uh, wanting me to do a breakfast at a local church so that they could come and meet me in person. And the Lord woke me up in the middle of the night and said, the last thing that these ladies need is another breakfast. He (laughs) said, I want you to go over to this, and it was a low-income housing area, and I want you to do an outreach. Well, what had happened a year before that is my husband had left me five days before I delivered my daughter. So here I am, nine months pregnant. My my baby girl was born on July 9th. It was July 4th. He told me that he was going to leave me. He said, I had planned on, I was coming home that night, telling you I was going to leave you, and you told me that day that you were pregnant. So I've stayed with you these nine months because you're pregnant, but I'm letting you know I'm leaving. I'm telling you, my whole world came crashing down. How but devastating. I had, exactly. But I had God. And what the Lord said to me was, I want you to go take what you do have, because I was still believing God for diapers and baby food, believe me. He said, I want you to take what you have, and that is knowing that God is a father to the fatherless, and I want you to go over here to this adopted neighborhood. So we had a big budget of $500, which was crazy, a step of faith for me at the time. We gave away groceries, and we gave away clothes, and we we did hot dogs. We did what we call a neighborhood celebration outreach. Yes. All of the people came together, and we gave away, our ministry gave away, a $100 gift card to Walmart. But what I did was I made them all assemble before we drew names, and they had to be there to win. So this was their goal, was to, you know, get the card. Yeah. But then I preached the gospel. That day, uh, a young girl by the name, I'll call her D, and she's given me permission now to use her real name, but her name will say that she's D. She had three children, and she was living with the father of her children in an abusive relationship, not married, living together. That day, Dee came out because she needed groceries to feed her children, which I could so relate. She gave her life to Jesus. She was one of many that gave their life to the Lord that day. Praise and the And her Lord. life radically changed for her and her children. I can tell you today, fast forward all of these years, mm-hmm. her children, oh gosh, her daughter, she had twin girls and a girl and boy twins that are 22 years old, and then she has a son who is now, uh, gosh, she's either 19 or 20. Her children have graduated college and are very successful. She moved out of subsidized housing. It's just a miracle turnaround, all because of our obedience to say, yes, Lord, when God says to go. Wow. That is awesome. Praise God. And I, you had written that the word, God's word, is the map out of the pit. Yes. And so you gave her God's word. Yes. So the next day, after the people got saved, the next morning was Sunday morning. So I went around with my daughter. (laughs) My daughter was my only volunteer at the time, (laughs) knocking on the door. And for those people that got saved, giving them a Bible and inviting them to go to church. So you had follow-up. 
Yes, we definitely did. Yes. That is just so awesome. Um, but that's been repeated multiple, multiple times, has it not, as you've continued in this wonderful ministry, which really does kind of get summed up by the title of your book, Don't Quit in the Pit. Amen. Yes, it does. What's so amazing is her children all got saved in our outreaches, our kids club. They learned to read. The, her youngest child had a, a reading or a learning disability. They said he would never read or be able to graduate. The, the young man is very successful because of our learning centers and our summer reading camps. So God used everything to turn their lives around. And the bottom line is, if we don't quit in the pit, God has the power to turn any situation around, and He will throw us the rope of hope, which is the Word of God. But we've got to grab a hold of that rope of hope. We've got to be determined not to quit, and God will take us all the way. Yes. Well, Danette, now go back uh, to your earlier life and give us an overview of your own testimony growing up. Well, growing up, my parents uh, took me to church a couple times a year we would go, and we'd go Easter and Christmas and maybe a few other times. You know, when I was 13, I joined the church and went through the classes. So they taught me about God, and they taught me how to pray. Of course, we didn't know anything about being saved. We didn't know anything about being filled with the Holy Spirit. But my parents divorced when I was in the fifth grade. And as a result uh, of that, like so many children, I went through, it was just a, a time when the enemy was trying to take root in my life, and I really developed a stronghold of rejection. Mm -hmm. But at the age of 17, I did something that I said I never would, and that is I went to the Holy Roller Church <laughs> across town, and I went to the Pentecostal Church, and um, I got radically saved. Were they rolling, Danette? Uh, no, but I kept my eyes open because I kept waiting for them. I thought that they would, but it was so amazing. I, I was just like, this guy, somebody has told this guy about my life. He was preaching my life and just come to find out, you know, it was the power of God. And by God's grace, I got saved and I've never looked back. Praise God, Danette. We are going to take a quick break right here on the road show. And when we come back, I want you to talk more about rejection and getting rid of rejection. Okay. So we'll be back in just a moment with Danette Crawford right here on The Roadshow. I'm David Warren here with some exciting news for Oasis listeners. We have a new mobile device app. It's free, easy to download, and lets you enjoy our refreshing music and talk everywhere you go. If you have an Android cell phone, go to the Google Play Store. And if you have an iPhone or iPad, visit the Apple Store and search for Oasis Radio Network. Be an Oasis ambassador and share this news with family and friends around the world. Oasis Network. We're back on the road show. I'm your host today, Kathy Mink, with a very special guest. Danette Crawford. We're talking about her new book, Don't Quit in the Pit. And it is available wherever books are sold, including Danette's website, joyministries.tv. Danette has a television outreach that is powerful because it's not just on Christian stations, but it's reaching the world because it's on secular television stations as well. Um, Danette, tell us about the rejection that you suffered. In the book, it seemed to be especially from your father, um, but throughout your life and how God has ministered to you and showed you how to help people get rid of rejection. Well, let me say this. Rejection is a huge problem and a root for so many people, and they don't even recognize it. Yes. For me, it wasn't that my, when my parents divorced when I was young in fifth grade, it wasn't that my father was rejecting me. 
what children do is they try to figure it out. They try to make sense of what's happening in their life, and they generally put blame on themselves for what's going on around them. Just because out of my little mind, that's the only reason I could come up with. So it wasn't that my father was rejecting me, but I received it that way. So in my book, I talk about going from the pit of rejection to the peak of acceptance. And you know, the Bible says that I have not rejected you, but you're my servant. I've chosen you and not rejected you in Isaiah chapter 41, verse 9. And after I got saved at the age of 17, it took a while for me to renew my mind according to the Word of God. And I realized that there's something that God taught me, that there's something called perception deception, and that the enemy wants us to be deceived into thinking that people are rejecting us. So that stronghold of rejection that the enemy strategically tried to place in my life was You know, the enemy doesn't know everything, but he knows enough about what you're called to do. And he tried from a young age to develop this root of rejection. And I had to begin to uh, allow the Holy Spirit to reveal it to me. You know, there's so much power in our words. The Bible says that the power of life and death is in the tongue. So not only were other people's words about me and to me, Uh, powerful, but so were my own. And I want to challenge us today to stop and think about what we're saying, what's coming out of our mouths. And when somebody says words to us, the Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so what people say to us or about us, that doesn't reflect who we are. God's word reflects who we are, but their words reflect who they are because it's coming out of their heart. Absolutely. And you talked about helping your own children uh, to avoid the pit of rejection. How would the listeners do that, Danette? You know, we have to be so careful what we speak over our children and what we allow other people. And when my daughter was born, and, um, you know, all of these years that I've been a single mom, I've been very careful to speak life over her. I had people say things to me and, oh, you know, I was determined, let's put it this way, I was determined that my daughter was not going to be a statistic. She then was raised in a single parent home and I was determined that my daughter wasn't going to be a statistic but that she was going to run after God and that's exactly what she's doing. So we need to see and discern the gifts in our children, and encourage those gifts, and we need to speak life over them. Yes, absolutely. Um, You talked about isolation. That really touched my heart because so many people we meet feel either really are isolating themselves or they feel isolated. Uh, What have you learned about that in bringing women out of that? So many times, and and now especially in the middle of this pandemic, the enemy likes to isolate you. You know, any abuser, if you are in an abusive relationship, the abuser always tries to isolate the victim. That's what the enemy tries to do. The enemy wants us to feel isolated. Why? Because God has created us to be social beings. The Bible says it's not good for man to be alone. It says, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. We need each other. That's the way God has created us. And so if the enemy can cause us to be isolated or feel isolated, he gets the upper hand. And then what can happen is the warfare can begin in our mind. So you have warfare that's just really targeted in your soul realm. Your soul is your your mind, your natural mind, your thinking, your emotions, and your will. Your will, your emotions, and your mind. So what you want, what you think, and what you feel. So the enemy tries to come in and take root in your soul realm to develop strongholds. And a tactic that he'll often use is isolation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, anger 
has been a big, big thing in our culture today. Uh, do you see anger that you have to deal with when you are ministering to so many people? Anger for many people is a reaction to rejection, whether it's actual or perceived. Anger is a way that people deal with pain, and they may not even realize it, but the root of their reaction of anger is their root of pain. And what we have to do is we have to allow the Holy Spirit to identify the pain in our life, and we have to allow the Holy Spirit to process our pain. And when we allow the Lord to process our pain, when we take it to the feet of Jesus, then we can deal with that anger. What does the Bible say? The Bible says to be angry and sin not. Mm -hmm. How do we sin in our anger? By letting the sun go down on our wrath. So it says it's, it's not wrong to be angry, but it's wrong to hang on to that anger. Then what happens is the devil can get a stronghold and he can wreak havoc in your life if you allow anger to be developed. Yes, that is so good. Um, there's so much in this book that can help people out of their pit. You've covered so many angles that the devil tries to entrap people in, and I really appreciate that. Again, the book for those listening is Don't Quit in the Pit by Danette Crawford. You can get it at joyministries.tv, and it's also available wherever books are sold. Now, I want to bring up something, Danette, that you had on page 44, and it is about blame, withholding blame. I have just seen so many people that don't take responsibility for their pit, <laughs> uh, and they're constantly finding someone else or some circumstance to blame. Yes. You know, and that is the key to all addiction is dealing with and have, taking responsibility. So it goes along with the pain. Take responsibility for your issues. I always say, you know, don't let somebody else's issues be your issues because you have enough of your own. I cannot allow somebody else's issues when they're talking or saying this or saying that to become my issues because I have enough of my own. <laughs> and I have to take responsibility for my issues. So here I was. I was in a, an abusive and emotionally and verbally abusive marriage. When my husband decided to leave, and here I was dealing with all of this, what the abuser does is he always makes you feel like you're the problem. Mm -hmm. I had to do something that was very responsible, not only taking care of my baby, but I had to take care of myself. I had to go to counseling. I had to go to great Christian counseling to sort some things out because it's like, I never want to get in this place again. You know what? God said to me, I said, God, how did this happen? I fasted. I prayed. I sought your face. I didn't marry the first guy that came along or the second or the third. He said, every Everybody has their choices to make. My husband chose not to take responsibility for his issues, but I had to choose to take responsibilities for mine and keep going forward in God. So as our listeners, allow the Holy Spirit to put his finger on our issues of pain and different things that we've gone through and process the pain. We can take responsibility where we're no longer reacting out of our place of pain, but we're acting. What do you mean acting? Well, we're taking responsible actions that are life-giving for us, our children, our families, and those around us as we are going forward, taking one step of obedience at a time to come out of the pit. Absolutely. You're acting on the Word. You're yes. acting on what God gives you. But I think one of the things that... Um, is so admirable that you overcame the shock of is that your husband was a Christian and you were basically deceived by him. But you just told us that you took responsibility and you didn't do the blame game, just blaming him. 
Yes, my husband really, well, he had been through Bible school. Uh, he was working a secular job. He His plan was for both of us, you know, his plan was to go into the ministry. Uh, and a few years after that, I had been in ministry all my adult life. We met at our church. Uh, we ministered together, him as a lay minister. And he had, uh, his heart was so right. The leadership approved of our marriage. Everything was all, you know, behind, everybody was all behind it. Sometimes people will have root issues. And in the right setting, those roots will sprout fruits, so to speak. Also, he put the foot forward that he wanted to be. And so in the form of deceiving me, he was the person, he was acting as the person that he really wanted to be. You know, Paul says, what I want to do, I don't do, but what I hate, I keep doing. Mm -hmm. And, And that was the situation. And though he had a great heart, and though he loved God, he did not deal with the roots of his issues. And it's so important. Christians need deliverance. Christians need to get free. Christians need to be healed. You know, when you get saved, if you had a broken leg before you got saved, your leg's still broken. You still have to go to the doctor, and you still have to keep that cast on there, unless God does a miracle. And sometimes God will do an instant miracle healing, but most of the time it's progressive. So when we get born again, our spirits are born again, and He had been born again for a number of years, but then it's in our soul realm, our emotions, our mind, our wills, our choices, that we need to be renewed, and we need uh, just to continue to grow and to, to, you know, really be delivered and grow according to God's Word. Yes, absolutely. Well, we're going to take a quick break. You're listening to my special guest, Danette Crawford, and we're talking about her book, Don't Quit in the Pit, available at joyministries.tv and wherever books are sold. Danette, when we come back, would you talk to us a little bit about forgiveness and bitterness? Because I know those are roots that people deal with as well. Yes. Okay, wonderful. We'll be right back. We'll take a quick break on The Roadshow. The Roadshow is a listener favorite, which airs each weekday here on the Oasis Radio Network, starting at 1 p.m. Eastern, 12 noon Central. The Roadshow also has a great section on our website, oasisnetwork.org. There you'll find audio archives of select past interviews, plus guest lineup and contact information, and links to our Roadshow sponsors and its hosts. So join us for The Roadshow, whether on your radio, computer, or mobile device at oasisnetwork.org. We're back on The Road Show. I'm your host today, Kathy Mink, with my guest, Danette Crawford, and she is telling us about the tremendous spiritual principles that she has learned from God's Word that she is helping to set so many people free with in her book, Don't Quit in the Pit. Now, Danette, talk to us about unforgiveness and bitterness and the... uh, (laughs) pinnacle, really, of forgiveness that so many people stumble over. Yes. You know, forgiveness is a choice. And most of the time, forgiveness is a process after that choice to forgive. The Bible says that if we don't forgive those that have hurt us, that have wounded us, God cannot forgive us of our sin when we don't forgive others. So that's huge. So this is a major priority to the Lord. So it needs to be a major priority to us. If any of us have lived life at any length of time, we've been hurt. And we've had opportunities every day, really, to hold on to unforgiveness and bitterness. The Bible says to forgive and to forgive quickly. When we do, we can continue to receive God's forgiveness, and we can be set free. But when we choose to hold on to unforgiveness, whether we realize it or not, we are keeping ourselves stuck and bound at that place. So I talk about in my book, as a young girl, that I had unforgiveness towards my father. Really what I had was I had a whole bunch of pain from growing up in a broken home. And was it this my dad's fault? No. 
But I had to learn to forgive. And I can remember being in college and God putting his finger on that, telling me that I needed to forgive my father. I said, Lord, I've already done that. I did that years ago. And God began to show me that there were still things in my heart and in my life that I needed to release. There's something called a bitter root judgment also. You know, when we've been hurt by somebody or a situation and we haven't released it or been totally healed from it, we can develop what you call a bitter root root judgment. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says that that if you don't get rid of it, it can grow up to defile you and many other people because you pass it along to others. Yes. But a bitter root judgment is when you have unforgiveness towards somebody that's caused you pain, you are judging them. That root of bitterness turns into judgment. No matter what they do, you have a problem with it. They cannot do anything right in your eyes. Everything that they say, you can hear that person's name. Let's say the the person's name is Randy or Paul or Joe or Susie or Jane. You can just hear that name and something inside of you reacts. Yes. That shows you that you have a bitter root judgment and God wants to uproot it by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, absolutely. And the world would be a brand new place if everyone called on God to heal that and got free of it. (laughs) Amen. Um, Now, in chapter 12, I'm trying to cover so many of the tremendous points that you make. Uh, But for those listening, this is just a little bit of the winning strategy in Danette's book. Um, Chapter 12, Danette, page 130 you have the title, From the Pit of Whining to the Peak of Winning. I like that. (laughs) Can you talk about that a little bit? Yes, yes. Well, the Lord said to me, so my husband left. I had a little newborn baby. You know, you go through all of the emotions of having a baby. This was my first baby. And gosh, no family here. My husband left. I'm in ministry or was in ministry full time. Here we go. And I was, I can remember in the middle of the night, I'm sitting in my floor crying. I was broke. I had no money. I had a hungry baby. I was trying to use the diaper genie. I don't know if you've ever had a diaper genie. Oh my gosh, those things were crazy. Yes. You know, putting the diapers in it. And I'm sitting in the middle of my floor crying because I hadn't had any sleep. I was totally broke. And God said, Danette, you can be a whiner or you can be a winner. And I really had to look at my reaction to my situation. And so many times what we want to do is we want to whine and we want to feel sorry for ourselves, and we want everybody else to feel sorry for us. For us. And God said, Danette, you have to decline to whine. You have to <laughs> decline to whine when the enemy wants you to whine. And he said, you can be a whiner or a winner, but you can't be both. And he said, whiners, they always are talking about what they're going through. But winners, they talk about where they're going to. Oh, and God yes. said, Danette, all the things that I told you you're going to do for me, all the things that you're called to do, that hasn't changed. Your circumstances have changed, but that hasn't changed. I want you to begin to talk about where you're going and where I'm going to take you because that's still my plan for your life. That is just awesome. And you were in a situation that would make anybody want to whine. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And yet, I I just am so thankful that you heard the Lord speaking to you that you could go into winning instead of whining. And look at what has come from that because you acted on that. And now you minister to so, so many through Joy Ministries. Um, I want you to tell me a little bit about your Mother's Day thing that you do uh, every year and how that started and what has come out of that. Well, this is will be our 21st year that we've done the annual Mother's Day celebration. We bring single moms, widows, and military wives whose husbands are deployed 
and we honor them on their special day, giving them a five-star meal at uh, the local Marriott or Hilton, wherever we have it that year. They bring their children, you know, single moms and widows, uh, because then I became a widow. My husband died when my daughter was four. He left, and then he died. And, you know, the bottom line is these women pull double duty all year long. Mm-hmm. And we need to honor them. God said, Danette, I want you to bring my women together and honor them on their special day. So I preach a word of encouragement to them. We roll out the red carpet. They walk in. We hand them either a rose or a red carnation. Everyone gets a Mother's Day gift, a five-star meal. We take care of the children, um, the younger children, and then the older children. They're there with their mom that day. It really is a wonderful day. And these women get saved that day. They get filled with the Holy Spirit. So many people coming in off the street getting saved, delivered, and healed because we're remembering them on their special day. And the Bible says, don't forget the widows and and the, the fatherless, the poor, the oppressed, and the widows. It says, bring them in and honor them. And that's what we do. That is beautiful, and to, I've always been concerned about single mothers as well as the widows, and I think, you know, we should treat the single mothers as widows. Absolutely. And, and honor them. Now, how do you get the word out uh, to, especially the unsaved women, to invite them to know to come to this Mother's Day event? Well, we have, we go door to door in our adopted neighborhoods. We put flyers and all kinds of businesses and restaurants. We have lots of news coverage, ABC, CBS, and NBC cover it because we've done it for 21 years. And I want to encourage our listeners to always remember every day, every week, to remember the single moms and reach out to them. I've had pastors say, oh, well, we have single moms, but they don't have any needs. I'm like, trust me, they have all kinds of needs. They're not telling you about the needs yes. because they're so busy working to provide for their children, and they feel like they don't have anyone that they could reach out and talk to. But they have needs, and we need to reach out to them. That is so true. I remember, Danette, um, Len and I were doing a meeting in a church, and uh, it was a conference, and there were several speakers, but we were all there together. And the Lord spoke to me, have all the widows come mm. up front and stand here. Yes. And they came and they stood across the front. And he said, now tell people to bring money and throw it at their feet. Aww. And that to me was just something that should happen a lot. But some of those women, Danette, told me that they had been widows or single moms for 10, 15 years, and no one had ever done anything Mm. for them. Absolutely. You just nailed it. Kathy, you just nailed it. And you know what? I believe that that hurts the heart of God. I've been a single mom for 22 years. The Lord told me when my daughter, gosh, she was probably about 18 months old, and the Lord told me, he said, you're going to be married again. It's going to be longer than you thought but it's going to be worth the wait. That's Mm -hmm. what God said. God's never released me to date. I've never, the last person, my daughter asked me when she was 16, she said, Mom, who's the last guy you dated? I said, your dad. Mm -hmm. God has never released me. He's told me to stay focused on raising my daughter and raising the ministry that he had called me to do. And as I've stayed focused, God has allowed me to come into such an intimate place with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And that's what God wants for us. The Bible says your maker is your husband. The Lord Almighty is his name. And that he is a father to the fatherless. So today, maybe single moms are listening or those that they're not a single mom, but they know single moms on their job at their church. God, it's the heart of God for us to reach out and minister to them because what's happened, and I had someone tell me this, it was my CPA. When my husband first left, he said, Danette, you are a widow. And I looked at him. This was before my husband actually died. He said, your husband died spiritually. And Mm -hmm. the truth was he died spiritually before he died naturally. And I was a widow. 
And so that's the heart of God. And you want a ministry? Go encourage the single moms. Go encourage. And we need women and we need families doing that. Yes. You know, I, I guard my single moms because sexual predators prey on single moms. Yes. Single moms, do not let anyone watch your children. Don't let it because they try to prey on single moms. But we, as the church, need to minister to the single moms and the widows. Yes, and I am so glad that you said, be careful. Oh, totally. And especially guard your children, because just the Christians being so naive as to not be careful about that with all the... uh, predators out there and all the sex trafficking and all that, which I read on your website, Danette, that you are uh, doing something in that area too. Tell us about that. Yes, we have the Father's House and the Father's House is transitional housing for homeless single moms and children. And through our Father's House program, we also minister to uh, girls and women that have been human trafficked. So we do a lot with prevention, we do a lot with awareness, but we also um, do ministry in the area of rescue and rehabilitation for for these women. I want to say this, for the single moms to trust their discernment, your children are your greatest asset. Don't allow yourself to be tired and exhausted and wore out and not stay tuned in to the Holy Spirit and in the area of your children. Don't let people watch your children, you know, and trust your discernment. If it doesn't feel right, it's not right. If you have a weird feeling, trust me, there's something weird going on. And don't be afraid to speak up because God wants you to cover your children. You're the head of your household and you've got to guard your children. That is so true, and that is such great advice. Um, There's just so much in this book. Um, Let me give the name of the book again for those that may have just tuned in in the last few minutes, Danette. Don't quit in the pit. Whatever pit you're in, don't quit. There's a way out. Uh, Don't Quit in the Pit by Danette Crawford. Wherever books are sold, it's available. And on her website, joyministries.tv, the book uh, gives hope. The book gives keys. And we're going to take a quick break here on the Roadshow and be back for our last segment, Danette. And I want to I want you to talk about whatever you feel led, but I also want you to include a little bit of chapter seventeen key choices. Amen. So we'll be right back on the road show. I'm David Warren, program director at Oasis Radio Network and one of the hosts of this podcast. All of our hosts enjoy hearing from you, our listening family, so drop us a note. Our email address is roadshow at oasisnetwork.org. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast and you'll receive new episodes on your mobile devices. And now, back to the show. We're back on a very exciting roadshow. I'm your host today, Kathy Mink, with special guest Danette Crawford, talking about her book, Don't Quit in the Pit. You can get it at Danette's website, joyministries.tv. Danette, tell us again, before we start into Chapter 17, the key choices, tell us about your television outreach and where uh, the listeners can see you on television. Well, my teaching program is called Hope for Today with Danette Crawford, and we are on numerous Christian networks as well as secular We're on ABC and CBS and CW Network. They can go to our website, joyministries.tv, and get the complete listing and tune in. I know that you will be blessed. Absolutely, and you've got uh, a new talk show uh, format coming out with uh, the Christian actor, uh, 
Clifton, Clifton Davis. Davis. Yes. yes. And we're excited about that. Yeah, so my show, uh, the new show that we are beginning to uh, record is called Joy with Danette Crawford, and it's going to be a Christian talk show format. Clifton Davis is my executive producer, and he's also going to be a guest co-host from time to time. We're going to be dealing with real-life issues, so issues and topics, uh, topics and testimonies. So it's going to be powerful, and you'll also be able to find it on the same exact networks that my show, Hope for Today, is aired on. Okay, that's wonderful. Now, I want to look at uh, Chapter 17 in your book toward the end, and it's entitled, Key Choices to Get Out of Any Pit. Yes. The first key that I share in my book is act, don't react. You know, so many times we react out of our flesh, we react out of our soul realm, but the key to getting out of the pit is getting a word from God and acting out of your spirit. And I use the scripture in Second Chronicles chapter 20, when Jehoshaphat realized that this vast army that was much bigger than him and his army were coming out against him. But he resolved to inquire of the Lord. In other words, he took time to ask God what to do. He began to pray, fast, get before the Lord, and then he acted. When we react out of our flesh, when we react out of our emotions, out of our soul realm, a lot of times our pit can get bigger. You know, there's many women that have gone through what I went through that they reacted out of their flesh. Some of them got addiction. Some of them jumped into another relationship. Many different ways that, that brought greater pits and greater pains. But when we reach for God and get a word from Him, then we can act out of our spirits. Now there's a message and a word from God, because how much better to take time and listen to the Lord and with your Bible than to jump into more pain. Amen. A bigger mess. Um, You also said don't panic in the pit. Don't panic in the pit. What we do (laughs) is we panic, right? We panic. Can I tell you, I I, I can tell you this from experience, of course, because I lived the whole book. You have to live it before you get to write it. Yes. And then, but when we panic, we react out of our soul realm. And God began to teach me that I needed soul control. And I was like, what do you mean soul control? I'd never heard that before. God said, Dennett, you need soul control. Don't react out of your soul. It's not what you want, what you think, and what you feel. We live life, if we're not careful, by we're being controlled by what we want, what we think, and what we feel. But, and so then we react out of our panic because how we feel is we feel panic. God wants us to have soul control, meaning that our spirit man is in control of our soul. And how do we get that way? By feeding our spirit, not feeding our panic or our fear. Yes, yes, yes. Um, You said on page 202, you said a caution regarding determination. What do you mean by that? Well, determination... Your determination, my determination, can take us just about anywhere we want to go. You have to make sure that your determination is lined up with the will and the ways of God. It says in Psalms 37, 4, delight yourself in the Lord, and I'll give you the desires of your heart. You know, when we really delight ourselves in the Lord, God turns our heart according to what he wants the desires to be. And so the same is true as we are walking out and living out every single day. We have to have our determination lined up with the Holy Spirit. You know, if you're determined that you're going to get married, you're going to get married, but you Mm -hmm. might find yourself in a bigger pit. If you're determined that you're going to move or you're going to change jobs or you're going to do this, Whatever your determination is, your determination can take you just about anywhere you want to go. That's why you've got to make sure that your determination is lined up with the Holy Spirit because you don't want to go any place that God doesn't want you to go. Yeah, that is really wisdom. I've seen so many women that were just determined 
to remarry uh, and didn't want to be alone. And they were more determined on that than they were, you know, protecting their children and listening to the Lord. Amen. That is dangerous. Amen. And you know what? When we disobey God, the Lord said to me, because there was a time I was trying to buy a house, um, and it wasn't God's time for me to buy a house. And there was a guy that I wanted, that was asking me out that I wanted to go. This was a number of years ago. And the Lord said to me, if you don't obey me, the anointing on your life will be lifted. Can I tell you, number one, we've got to guard our children. Our children are an asset. And also the presence of God, the anointing of God is an asset in our lives. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit by walking in disobedience to what he says to do for your daily choices. Yes. And you've got key focus, focus on the finish line. Amen. When you focus, focus is so powerful. And we must remain focused on the finish line. In other words, that's where we're going. That's where we're running to. God told me that I was to focus on raising my daughter and that to raising the ministry and that he had called me to do. And you know what? Along the way, I used to be a long distance runner. You in the middle of rain, in the middle of snow, in the middle of leg cramps, You've got to keep it moving. You've got to focus on the finish line so you'll cross it. And we've got to stay focused. Esther was a woman of great focus. She knew that it was God that took her to the palace. And what she got in her palace position, she knew that God brought her there, right? For yes. the people's sake, not for her own sake. So as we stay focused on the finish line, In other words, doing what God has called us to do and going all the way, we can come to that place and we can finish strong and hear God say, well done, good and faithful servant. Yes, yes. Um, Now tell us, Danette, what other books you have available? Uh, You mentioned a a breakthrough book. Uh, It's called Break Free. I'm so excited. It is a 45-day devotional that goes along with my book, Don't Quit in the Pit. It was just released last month, 45-day devotional that's going to bring you to a place of encounter that's going to change everything in your life. It's called Break Free. It goes right along with Don't Quit in the Pit. And I'm telling you, we're getting testimonies all over the nation about how Break Free has caused people to break free of different situations to be released to the next level. Also, I have a book called Limitless Thinking, Limitless Living. It's available anywhere books are sold. I have a book, Total Turnaround. Also, God, You've Got Mail and Standard (laughs) Setters. So six books. You can get them anywhere books are sold at Barnes & Noble, Amazon, your local Christian bookstore, or my website. You can go to DanetteCrawford.com or JoyMinistries.com. I'll take you to the same place and get your copies today. Yes, or JoyMinistry.tv. Yes. We got that too. Well, uh, we appreciate you turning your pit, Danette, into total victory and ministry to millions of people to help them climb out of their pit. Well, thank you. And it's been a joy to have you on the road show. And uh, we thank you so much. We bless your ministry and uh, encourage people to go to your website, joyministries.tv. Um, look Danette up and take some advice from her that is straight from the word. Danette, thank you for being on the road show. Thank you so much. God bless. You've been listening to The Road Show. If you'd like to write to us, here's our address. The Road Show, P.O. Box 1924, Tulsa, Oklahoma, 74101. Our email address is roadshow at oasisnetwork.org. The views of today's guest aren't necessarily those of this station, but we do appreciate and thank our guest for spending this time with us. The Roadshow, an Oasis Network presentation.